bring your mind to the breath, and we're going to keep it here. We're trying to develop our powers of concentration. That means you have to focus on one thing and let everything else go. If any thoughts come up, if they're not related to the breath, just let them go. Let them go. If they are related to the breath, see if they can help make it easier to stay here, make it more comfortable, make the mind firmer here. Those kinds of thoughts you can let in. We're trying to develop concentration, which is part of the path. Today is Asalaha Pucha, the day that the Buddha taught the Noble Eightfold Path for the very first time. And so we'd like to think about which factors we're missing. There are eight factors altogether. You can go down the list. There's right view, right resolve. Those all relate to discernment. Our right view is right. Right view starts with the problem of suffering as the big problem to be solved. And then analyze it so you can figure out okay, what's the cause of suffering and if the cause of suffering is inside, so what can you do to get rid of those causes? So everything focuses in here. That's right view to begin with. Then there's right speech, right action, right livelihood. Those factors of the path cover your relationship with other people. How do you get along with them? Do you speak truthfully? Do you act in a harm harmless way? Do you gain your living in a harmless way? Okay, that's on the path. The difficult part, though, is the last one. Right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, getting the mind to settle down and keeping it here. Because the mind has lots of other agendas. Of course, a lot of these agendas have to do with wrong view. So you have to learn how to sort those out, clean those away. And sometimes even thinking about right view gets in the way of your concentration. If you want to get really subtle levels, you have to drop that at some point. But in the meantime, you use right view to direct you. Where is the right direction to go? So try to keep these things in mind as we remember the Buddha. This is after his awakening. He could have taught anything. For one, he could have, he could have decided he didn't want to teach, but he did want to teach. He saw it would be useful. And of all the things he taught about, he just realized okay, the problem of suffering is the way to get people to get out of their old habits, look at the way they're causing themselves suffering, and then give them a, a path to follow so they don't have to st stay stuck there. That's his gift to us. So we want to make sure that the gift stays whole and pass it down. We put it into practice, and that's what makes the gift solid. That's what gives life to the gift so it goes on to the next generation. Because part of what we're thinking about here is not only the Buddha, but all the people who have passed this teaching down to us. Without them, where would we be? We'd be victims of our own culture, whatever that culture was. But it wouldn't be the culture of the noble ones anymore. So the way to pass it down is to remember it properly, to understand it properly, and then to put it into practice. That way your practice becomes an inspiration to others. That's what keeps the Dharma alive. The Buddha went, the Buddha went to all that trouble again, awakening not only for his own sake, but also to be a Buddha who could teach. And this was the first teaching. This was his last teaching. Everything in between comes under this. So try to remember the Eightfold Path. Make sure that all the factors are, at least you're making an effort in the direction of all the factors. Try not to leave any of them out.